An old pastor used this as an example one day of faith. He said, this is a fact. You're sitting there, and I'm up here. That's a fact. My faith is that you are actually listening. <laughs> old joke, I would just tell you that right now. I will encourage you to take your pew Bible out today. We're going to look at the book of Joshua. We're going to look at page 332, chapter 2. This happens before the text that we read this morning. Joshua, chapter 2. We're going to look at 8 through 11 in just a moment. And that's found on page 332 in the front portion of your hymnal. I mean, I, it's a hymnal Bible. That's the black book that's uh, there. Okay, so I want to let you know is that Rahab's a prostitute. Now, how many of you women run around with prostitutes? Pro probably not quite running around with them. I'm not asking guys, okay? <laughs> but if you are a guy and you're doing that, it's sinful. So in Matthew chapter 1, the genealogy of Jesus, listen to this. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, quite interesting, she is the lineage of Jesus. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the king, the father of King David. Rahab is the great, great grandmother of King David. Think about that for a moment. So when you begin to look at these things, there's only two women that are listed in Hebrews chapter 11, the, the book of faith, or the, basically the hall of faith. One is Sarah. I would expect her to be in there because she has the pedigree. She's the wife of Abraham. The other woman that's listed in the book of Hebrews is Rahab. She does not have the pedigree because she's a prostitute. But yet, she has gone from sinner to saint in Scripture. So we're going to talk about that this morning and talk about us just as well. Well, what we know is that Salmon eventually, who is one of the two spies, marries Rahab. We also know that Rahab lived in Jericho and that she had heard the stories about the children of Israel. Forty years before, she heard the story of the children of Israel going through the Red Sea. She had just recently heard the stories of the children of Israel destroying the Amorite kings east of the Jordan. So now all fear is over all the west side of the Jordan, including Jericho. What we do know is that the walls around Jericho were about 26 feet tall. What you may not know is that the walls are six feet thick. And in that, they build apartments within the wall structure. But this is just the outer wall because there's also an inner wall that is above the first wall, which is about another 20 feet higher than the first wall. So if you even can breach the first wall, you would be in the killing zone for the second wall. So this is pretty much an impregnable city by human standards of that time. We do know that Rachel is known as a harlot, but she also has a day job. She makes linen because she is drying flax on her rooftop, which she would dry out and make linen with. Two spies come to her home. No wonder they come to her home, because where are you going to get the latest and the greatest gossip? At the harlot's house. She knows what's going on in Jericho. So the king finds out that two spies from Israel are at the harlot's house. He sends his soldiers. She figures it all out before the king sends the soldiers, has the two spies go and lay on her roof under the flax. And of course, when the soldiers come to her home, it's not hard to look in because it's a six foot wide by how long it is. That's her home. What she tells the soldiers is, is that the two spies left just before the gate was closed at dusk. Hurry and you might catch them. So the soldiers are on their way and chasing the spies. 
you don't know all of this stuff because really what we talk about is the walls of Jericho falling down. But there's the story behind the story about the spies. Rahab makes a deal with the spies. Your lives for the life of my family. That's the deal. And they agree to it. So in the evening, Rahab goes, gets them up, and allows them to go down on a, a scarlet cord. She lets them down through the window in the wall of her home. They go into the hills, stay there for three days, and then go back and tell Joshua their spy story. Scarlet rope. In the book of Isaiah, it says, Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. So today I'd like to talk about the obstacles of faith, because this is really what we're talking about is faith today. What are the obstacles of faith for Rahab? First obstacle, she's a woman. She's basically a nobody in a male culture. The second thing is, she's a harlot. So she's not even an anybody in a woman's culture as well. So she's a woman between cultures. But what she does is she risks her life for her enemies by hiding the spies. Now, I don't know about you, but how many of us would risk our lives for our family or our friends, let alone an enemy? So let's look at Joshua chapter 2 right now, and I'm going to invite you to read verses 8 through 11 with me. We're going to read Joshua 2, beginning with verse 8, 8 through 11. We read together. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given the land to you. That is a great fear of all who have fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to Cheyenne and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Stop right there. Do you see her statement of faith? The Lord your God is Lord of heaven above and earth below. She recognizes is that it's just a matter of time before what happened east of the Jordan happens to Jericho as well. So what are our obstacles of faith? We've talked about Rahab, but what are our obstacles? Well, what if I told you that you are spiritual harlots. You are a spiritual harlot. Let me show you from Judges chapter 2. Yet they would not listen to their judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshiped them. They quickly turned from the ways of their ancestors who had been obedient to the Lord's command. Martin Luther said, whatever is most important to you is your God. The God of this world is hedonism. Hedonism is how do I enjoy my life? How do I use the resources around me so that I'm a happy person? Well, I'd like to contrast two words together today, holiness and happiness, and they're not mutually exclusive. But I can tell you when I was a teenager I followed the God of hedonism it was all about me maybe when you were a teenager you were just like me you just focused in on self and pleasure and how can I be happy I was a rebellious teenager I knew the Lord but I didn't put him first what I did is put myself first and my happiness first. But I will tell you that later on in life, I have learned 
that happiness comes out of holiness. And I'll share that with you at a later time in this message today. So none of you, I'm sure, have been tempted by the God of hedonism. The God of hedonism says joy, money, sex, whatever it is, will make you happy. Doing alcohol, doing drugs, doing pornography, whatever it is, will make you happy. That's the God of hedonism in our land this day. Our country, and possibly us, we have been the harlot by not loving God with all we have, first and foremost. The second obstacle that Rahab faced is she had never seen the Israelites in action. She had not witnessed the Red Sea parting, nor had she seen what the Israelites had done to the Amorite God. She had only heard the message. We too are like Rahab. We have only heard the message because we have not physically witnessed Jesus on earth, Jesus dying on the cross, or Jesus rising from the grave. But John says this in the last chapter, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but they are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The definition of faith from Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance for what we do not see. So we are confident in what we have not seen. Make sense? It does not. If you haven't seen it, how can you be confident that it's really going to happen? That is faith. We are like Rahab because we have played the harlot spiritually and we have not physically seen, and yet we believe, even though we have obstacles to our faith. Secondly is obedience of faith. So I'd like you just to look and follow along with me. We're going to start with verse 12. I'm not going to ask you to read this with me. It's a little bit longer section, but follow along. We're starting with verse 12, chapter 2. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us this land. So she let them down by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. Now she said to them, Go to the hills so that the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there three days until they return, and then go on your way. The men said to her, This oath you made us swear will not be binding on us, unless when we enter the land you have tied this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down, and unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers, and your family into your house. If anyone goes outside your house into the street, his blood will be on his own head, and we will not be responsible. As for anyone who is in the house with you, his blood will be on our head, if a hand is laid on him. But if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the oath you made, you made us swear. Now I encourage you, read verse 21 with me. We read together. Agreed, she replied. Let it be as you say. So she sent them away, and they departed, and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. An act of faith. Rahab risked her life to save the life of her enemies. Jesus gave his life for his enemies, you and me, as sinners. 
Rahab hung a scarlet cord outside of her window as a testimony to her faith. And as believers in Jesus, we lay out our scarlet lives of sin in front of all humanity. But what we proclaim is that we are sinners who have been made saints by the crimson blood of Jesus himself. Rahab's faith enabled her to turn from her culture, her people, and her religion to commit her life to Jesus, or commit her life to the Lord. We have, as believers, turned our backs on our culture, sin-depraved culture, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to live a life that is morally different to a morally decadent world. Obedience of faith is in serving. It is offering ourselves as living testimonies to Jesus Christ and what he means for each and every one of us. Well, let me share with you a little bit more of my story. In eighth grade, my pastor asked me to be a pastor. I can tell you my high school years, I served the God of hedonism. I was in church frequently, more infrequently, because I like to stay out very late on Saturday evening partying. Very hard to get up on Sunday morning, if you know what I mean. What I learned, though, is that God gave me a godly wife. God gave me children. He helped me to understand is that you actually have to take care of your children. You can't just serve yourself. You can't expect your wife to do it all. You actually have to get involved in the family of serving. My first step back to the Lord of understanding it wasn't all about me. It was all about serving. And when we had our business, the Lord showed me something. Money does not make you happy. There is a big hole in you when you have money, and that's your God. Because all you can do is have more money, more pleasure. But the more you get, the more you have to have. What I learned is that talking to my pastor, he said, start our introduction class called Life with God. Pastor Jofo, you'll remember that class very well. Back in the 1980s. I learned what I had forgotten in my catechism class in eighth grade, that there is only one God, and that one God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and God sent his Son to die for me and for you. And I was to live my life now for a higher purpose called holiness rather than happiness. But holiness does bring happiness because there is no void within. I hope that makes sense to you. So we've talked about obstacles of faith. We've talked about the obedience of faith. Now we talk about overcoming by faith. And from Hebrews chapter 11, these words. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. She is listed in the book of James as a person of faith. James says, don't talk about your faith. Show me your faith. Show me what you do, how you live as a living testimony that Jesus is your Lord. You see, once we come to Jesus in faith, our past no longer matters. The past for Rahab doesn't matter because she's listed in the genealogy of Jesus. She's listed in the chapter of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 as one of the two women of faith. No matter your past, Jesus loves you. Jesus accepts you. 
and he forgives all of your sins, no matter how bonehead they are, Jesus forgives all of your sins. So God's grace does not depend on your pedigree. God's grace depends on his grace, his mercy, and his love for the world and for you as an individual. From saint to sinner, God's love for each and every one of us. And oh, you may have missed that last verse that we read earlier today, that when Rahab and her family were saved, they were outside the camp. They had to be there because they were not family. They were not Jewish enough because they were Gentile. But it must come sometime later that they were accepted into the family because she was married to one of the two spies. They became part of the Jewish community. Bringing the hope of Christ to our community is recognizing that there's plenty of Rahabs in our community. We are to love them as we have been loved. In the name of Jesus and all God's children say, Amen. Heavenly Father, continue to watch over us and bless us. May we continue to be people of grace who live out grace, who live out forgiveness, who accept others where they are. And we can help them too. We can be used to help them to go from sinner to saint. We pray, O oh Lord, for your forgiveness, your mercy, and grace in our lives. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we do the same to others. In the name of Jesus and all God's children say, Amen. Amen.